I was done, but I still have another video to make before I go home. Dang it. So here we go. Simplifying radical expressions. This is section 8.5, I believe. So we're going to simplify some radical expressions. Our question today is how do you add the square root of 48 and the square root of 75? And you might be saying, well, don't you just add 48 and 75? And the answer is no, you can't do that. That's crazy talk. Don't even try it. So there's a way that you can do it. And I want you to describe the process of how to do it. Before we get to that type of problem, let's look at some simplifying radicals with variables, especially variables that are not going to be really nice and uh, do exactly what we want. So without further ado, so remember we know that when there's no number there, the index is 2, which means I'm looking for 2 of a kind to take outside of the radical. So when we have coefficients like this, we can just say, okay, well, that's 3 times 25 because I know that 75 is 3 quarters, or 3 like quarters, like coins. So anyways, um, and then 25 I know is 5 times 5 because math and stuff. So I'm looking for 2 of a kind, and I got it. I got a 5, but I've got a 3 left over. So the 5 can come outside, but the 3 has to stay inside. Okay, the x's. Now there's some options with this. Here's a bad option, but it's an option. Here's what you could do. You could say, okay, I've got six x's. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can look for how many pairs you have. Well, I've got one pair, two pair, three pair. So that means that I can take three x's outside. So x to the third is what I can take outside. I don't do that. Instead, what I would do <laughs> is I know that I'm looking for two of a kind. So I would just say, okay, well, six, does two go into six? Yes, it does. How many times? Three times. So at this point, I would say, oh, okay. So this is just x to the third and x to the third because x to the third times x to the third is x to the sixth. And then we have a pair of x to the thirds. All right, so what have we taken outside? I took a five outside. And I've taken an x to the third to outside. What did not make it outside? This three. So this would be the square root of three. And now we've simplified. Next one. Again, there's no number up there. That means we're looking for two of a kind because our index is two when there's no number there. Well, this is pretty simple. Six and six. Easy peasy. Problem. Two doesn't go into five. Dang it. I knew there was going to be something hard here. So let's see. What I can do on that one is I can just take an x and change this to x to the fourth because x times x to the fourth, there's still five x's there, right? And now two does go into four. It goes into four twice. So this is x squared and x squared. So I got a pair of x squareds, but I got an x left behind. Let's look at the y. 2 does go into y. Sweet. So this can be y to the fourth and y to the fourth. There's a pair of y to the fourth. So those can go outside. And there's no y's left over. So what's our final answer going to be? Well, I take a 6 outside. I know taking outside isn't the proper way to say it, but I'm just going to say it like that. And then this is x to the second, because so I've got a pair of x to the seconds. And then I've got a pair of y to the fourths. Did I have anything that I couldn't pair up? Yes, this x. So I'm left with the square root of x. So the variables can stay inside of the radical, just like the coefficients could when you had you know, the integers and the numbers and stuff like that. Next. All right, so now we have an index of 3. So we've got an index of 3, which means I'm looking for 3 of a kind. So let's start breaking down 32. 32 would be 2 times 16, and 16 is 4 times 4, and these all become 2s. Question, do I have three of a kind? Yes, I do. 
I've got these twos right here. Now, I still have these left behind. So I'm going to have a total of four, you know, the number four left in there. All right. What about the x's? Now, before we're saying, okay, does two go into the exponent? Now I'm going to say, does three go into the exponent? And yes, it does. Three goes in there once, so I know that I can split this up into x times x times x. And there I can take an x outside. What about this one? Does three go into five? No, it doesn't. So what can I do to make a y, an exponent for the y where three will go into it? Well, what I can do is split this up into y squared and y to the third. And then I've got three y's right here, y times y times y. And I can take those outside. But I've got this y to the second that I could not take outside. Lastly, what about z to 12? Does 3 go into 12? Yes, it does, four times. So this one could be like z to the fourth, z to the fourth, z to the fourth. Ah, there's all those beautiful z to the fourth. And since three went in there evenly, nothing gets left behind. Okay, so what came out? The two. The x is right there. Those are just x to the first. The y to the first right here. And the z to the fourth right here. What stayed in the radical? Well, remember, this radical is the third root. I cannot magically change it to the second root. So this is still the third root. So I had 2 and 2. So 4 is going to be inside there. All the x's came out. All the z's came out. But I have a y to the second as well. And there we go. 2xyz to the fourth. And then third root of 4y to the second. All right, next one. Let's go ahead and multiply. Remember, radicals can multiply with other radicals. So this is going to be 300. x to the 2 times five, uh, two plus 5, so that's x to the 7th. And then y to the 1 plus 7 is y to the 8th. All right, so I combined my 2 because radicals can multiply with radicals. Let's see, I'm looking for two of a kind because this is the square root. So I'm looking for two of a kind. So this would be 3 times 100, and 100 is 10 times 10. So there's my pair. That can come out. 3 stays behind. Uh, 2 does not go into 7, so I'm going to split this one up into x and x, uh, x to the 6th. So 2 does go into 6, so this is going to be x to the 3rd and x to the third. So I got a pair of x to the thirds there. And then <coughs> two does go into eight. So that's y to the fourth and y to the fourth. So I got a pair of y to the fourths. Okay, what came out? The 10 did. The x to the third did. The y to the fourth did. What did not come out of the radical? Three and x. And since I started with the square root, I'm ending with the square root there. All right, adding and subtracting radicals. Okay, so radicals kind of behave, they kind of behave like um, variables. Like if you have a like term, you can only combine x's with other x's, right, when you're adding subtracting. That's the same thing with radicals. You can only add and subtract the coefficients, so the coefficients are the only things that are adding and subtracting, if the radicands are the same. So the radicands are the numbers on the radical. So on this one, the radicands are the same. They're both 5. So that means I can add and subtract the coefficients. So I can just do 2 plus 8, which is 10, and then it's 10 root 5. Now, why is this? Because this part is saying, hey, I've got two root fives. And this guy over here is saying, hey, I've got eight root fives. So how many root fives do they have together? They've got 10 root fives together. See, it's kind of like combining like terms there. All right, this one. I've got two root sixes and I've got a root six. 
Well, how many root sixes are there? There is one. So how many total root sixes do I have? Well, I have two root sixes here and one more here. So that's a total of three root sixes. Okay. All right, last one. So this kind of gets to this problem right here. See, we couldn't combine these two, right? Because they don't have the same radicant. We can't combine these two because they don't have the same radicant. So what should we do? Well, what we should do is we should reduce the radicals first to see if we can get the same radicant. So this one I'm going to split up into 2 and 36. Ooh, 36 is a perfect square. So this is 6 and 6. So 72 becomes 6 square root of 2, right? Because 6 can go out, and then I've got 2. Now 18 is 2 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So i got a pair of 3s there. Uh, i got a 2 left over. Now remember, you've already got a 5 outside. So anything that you're going to pull outside has to multiply with that negative 5 that's sitting there. So that's going to become negative 15 because I've got negative 5 times this 3 that's coming out there. And then root 2. Now that I have simplified each individual radical, now they have the same radicand. So I've got 6 root 2s, and then I'm going to take away 15 root 2s. So how many root 2s do I have left? I've got a total of negative 9 root 2s. So it's only the coefficients that are changing. The radicands kind of behave like variables where they don't change at all. There you go. I'm done, and I'm going to go home. You guys have a good weekend or week or wherever you're at when you're watching this. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.